Hello and welcome. Today, we're diving into something really interesting from Google AI. It's called Gemini 2.5 DeepThink. And let me tell you, this isn't just your standard model upgrade. It's a totally different way for an AI to approach, well, thinking. So let's just start with this question. Forget about an AI that just spits out the first answer it finds. Imagine, what if an AI could actually brainstorm, you know, explore a whole bunch of different ideas at once, weigh them against each other, and then give you the best one. And that really is the heart of it. Most AI today, it's pretty linear. It follows one single path to get to an answer as fast as it can, but deep think it's expansive. It's like it's throwing a bunch of ideas on a whiteboard, debating them with itself, and only then picking the winner. Okay, so let's officially break this down. What really is deep think? We're gonna get into the nuts and bolts of what makes this a fundamentally new way for AI to reason. So what's really going on under the hood here? Well, Google is calling it an enhanced reasoning model. And the secret sauce seems to be two things, parallel thinking and giving the AI extra thinking time. This lets it try out a bunch of different hypotheses simultaneously, and it gets better and better at this over time thanks to a pretty clever reinforcement learning technique. The result of all this? You don't just get a quick, short answer. You get these incredibly long, detailed, well-thought-out responses. But how does this parallel thinking thing actually work? Let's try and unpack the mechanics behind the magic. Okay, so here's the official definition for you. Parallel thinking is this ability to generate, consider, and, this is the cool part, even combine multiple ideas at the same time before it decides on the final answer. It's a huge shift from a one-track mind to, well, a multi-track mind. You can kind of break its process down into four main stages. First, it just generates a whole ton of different ideas or hypotheses. Then it gets that extended thinking time we talked about to really dig in evaluate, revise, and even smash different ideas together to see what works. And it's only after all that deliberation that it finally delivers what it thinks is the best possible solution. All right, so that's the theory. But what can this thing actually do? This is where it gets really, really impressive. We're talking about a leap in power that covers everything from super complex math to genuinely creative art. When you look at the hard data, the numbers are just staggering. It's setting new records and coding benchmarks. But look at that math score, a 60.7% on the International Mathematical Olympia benchmark. That's a jump from 21% and good enough for a conceptual bronze medal. That is a huge leap forward. It's just setting a new state of the art across the board. But you know, it's not just about acing tests. What's blowing my mind is how this raw analytical power translates into real creativity. People are using it for stuff like generating complex vector art. And yes, that pelican on a bicycle is a real example from a user. It's designing entire game worlds, simulating stars and planets, and even helping mathematicians solve problems that nobody had proven before. It's a whole new level of creative output. So you're probably wondering, how do I get my hands on this? Well, for now, it comes with a pretty hefty price tag. It's part of the Google AI Ultra Plan, which is almost 250 bucks a month. And even then, you only get a limited number of these deep think prompts each day. And yeah, that price point is definitely sparking some debate. This quote from a Reddit user kind of sums it up perfectly for a lot of people. The tech is awesome, no doubt, but is it worth that much money for limited access? The community seems to still be weighing that out. Okay, let's pivot to something that is absolutely crucial here. When you have this much power, you have to talk about safety and responsibility. And Google is tackling this head-on with something called the Frontier Safety Framework. It's a cliche for a reason, right? With great power comes the need for great caution. When you build a tool this powerful, you have to be just as thoughtful about preventing it from being used for harm. So what is this FSF? It's basically Google's internal playbook for checking the risks of their most powerful models. They focus on four big areas, cybersecurity, the future of AI research itself, deceptive alignment, that's the AI tricking us, and what's known as CBRN. That stands for chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear threats. Now, this is really important. 
Google was pretty transparent in their report that DeepThink is so capable in some areas that it actually triggered their own internal early warning alerts. That means the model's power was so significant that it automatically kicked in a whole extra layer of safety checks and precautions before they would even consider releasing it. In this chart, kinda shows you why. These are the test results for CBRN-related information. You can see DeepThink, that dark bar, is way ahead of the previous models. Now, Google says this shows an uplift in some stages of some harm journeys, but they're also very clear that creating a real-world threat is still incredibly complex and that this needs a lot more study. So what are they doing about it? It's a whole multi-layered defense system. They're doing threat modeling with experts, building safety guardrails right into the model, constantly monitoring for how it's being used, and they have teams that are always trying to red team it, basically trying to break their own defenses to find any weak spots. So let's pull all of this together. What does a model like this actually mean for the future of how we solve problems? What does this mean for us? When you boil it all down, DeepThink feels like a really big step forward. We're moving away from AI that just calculates things for us to an AI that can genuinely create and strategize with us. It's less of a tool and more of a collaborator. And that kind of leaves us with a huge, fascinating question to think about. We've seen AI master games, then data, and now it's starting to master this kind of complex reasoning. So as these systems get better and better at solving problems in ways that might be totally new to us, what's left for us? What becomes the new frontier for human ingenuity? That's something to chew on. Thanks for joining this explanation.